Well, the purpose of the workshop was to set up a residency that was focused on integrating literacy and music. So the purpose was to give the teachers the big picture of what our work was going to be doing together and what their roles and responsibilities were in that and some of the activities to give them a sense of what would actually be happening with their children in terms of the scaffolding or the progression of the work. Well, I'm going to be presenting this PD in some ways as if you've never heard me before, so some of it makes sense in the context of a standalone experience. So in front of you, on this sheet of paper, this packet of paper, is basically the outline that I'm going to be working from. Um, for your reference down the line, uh, a lot of this is going to be familiar to you, but it'll also serve as a good review, which is good for all of us. It's good for me to review it at this stage because I haven't actually done this curriculum since I saw you guys last. I've done mm. the full-blown West African drum and dance experience a bunch of times, and I've done the science soundscapes experience, which is a whole other kind of adventure, which I think you guys would really enjoy. What we will be doing, it says there on the start of section number one, the students will be creating a musical sound effect and rhythm pattern selection to enhance their live reading and theatrical presentation of the story over in the meadow. Over in the meadow has 10 little chapters about 10 little animals and 10 of the things that they do. And in the process, the kids will be learning about verbs and the kids will be learning a little bit about adjectives this year. We're going to add a little more to it. And... Um, Section B of what they're going to do, they're going to learn appropriate behavior and playing techniques for percussion instruments, which of course you're familiar with. Um, I'm assuming that Angela has rounded up a whole bunch of percussion instruments for us. Uh, she'll be back. She's, she's going to check. Usually part of this experience is I'm checking on things as we go, but I know she's got some other challenges today. Um, C, they'll be practicing their basic reading aloud skills. And D, something that we didn't do last year, there's a whole game that I have called expressive reading and they'll be working on pitch, dynamics, and tempo. You notice those are three musical vocabulary words as adjuncts to reading strategies as well as gestures. Um, we remember that they do a whole thing about clapping steady beat in unison, and that's one of their primary benchmarks at grade, grade one. Um, Angela, can I ask you a quick question? Sure. Have I reminded you that we need to round up all those percussion instruments? You're my hero. Thank you so much. She's such a rock star. Um, there's nine musical vocabulary words. You'll discover as part of today's flow that some of the definitions have changed slightly, um, largely because the music standards are about to change over to the national standards, and I don't believe that anybody's paying attention to whether I'm using the state standards exactly the way they were written five years ago or ten years ago, and nobody's paying attention. And what I notice is that the kids really remember the way I do it, call and echo. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be doing that call and echo today. And there's a new chart, which Angela has made you both new charts with the new definitions. And so we'll be digging into those nine, and then there's three more that are not really part of their testable um, vocabulary words, but we'll include those on the chart as well. So we'll get to that in a second. Um, they will be exploring and interpreting a character out of their story through acting. You remember the acting element? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And my favorite part, they will self-manage their individual musical reading and acting responsibilities by reading and understanding the use of an organizational chart, and you will not be allowed to tell them what to do and when to do it. Did you like that part? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you believe me when I first told you we were going to do it that way? No. Oh, that was a lot. Yeah, that, that, it is a lot. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a huge, yeah, it's a huge piece for them to learn how to read all the words that go on those charts and then actually make sense of columns and rows. So mm -hmm. that's one of my favorite parts of this curriculum. Then it says there in bold letters, teachers will be able to adapt and repeat this curriculum on their own in the future. So just know that that's one of Angela's agendas is the hope would be that you can use this year to really integrate what you got last year mm -hmm. and take it on your own and fly it in the future. Um, toward that end, there's why you have my phone number. I really want you to feel comfortable to ask me any questions you want anytime you want and consider that your workshop is not this hour today, but the next 11 weeks, and that we just happen to have some kids available that you can practice on. 